All right, so let's um dive into something that's you know everyone's talking about, but maybe not really talking about. You know, yeah, AI, yeah, artificial intelligence in healthcare. But forget yeah. the robot surgeons for a second, okay? Yeah, we're talking about AI that's already here. It's already in the doctor's office. Maybe even at your kid's next checkup. Right. And it's and it's tackling some massive hurdles, uh, you know, head on. I mean, I think a lot about the shortage of doctors that we're facing. Oh, yeah. And then also just the mountain of medical knowledge. I mean, just keeps growing and growing, and growing. Oh, absolutely. But the thing is, AI isn't here to replace anyone. Right. It's more like, you know, giving our healthcare providers like superpowers. Yeah, I like that superpowers. And to illustrate why this matters. Uh, Dr. Castro shared a really powerful story in his keynote. Mm -hmm. um, there was a little boy, he was seriously ill, and he was misdiagnosed for three years by 17, yeah. 17 different doctors. Wow. Can you imagine the agony for his parents? Oh, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it really is. But you know what? This is what really gets to me about AI and what it can do. So the mother, she's, you know, at her wit's end. She turns to AI as like a last ditch effort, inputs all of her son's symptoms, the whole medical history. And guess what? The AI pinpoints the issue, the one that those 17 doctors had missed. Wow. It makes you wonder how many other families are out there struggling with a misdiagnosis. Exactly. And how many of them could AI help? Right. And Dr. Castri seems to think this type of technology, what it really means is faster, more accurate diagnoses for everyone. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, one thing he emphasized was just the sheer volume of information. Doctors, they have to keep up with new research, clinical trials, treatment protocols. It's overwhelming. It is. It's impossible. It's impossible. And that's where AI can step in and help them stay current. Yeah. So they can focus on giving you, the patient, the best possible care. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like um, having a super smart assistant Aye. looking over your shoulder and saying, hey, Remember that really obscure study you glanced at two years ago? It's actually relevant to your patient right now. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. And that brings us to another challenge, right? Time. Time is precious, and doctors are drowning in paperwork administrative tasks. Oh, I know. And it eats into that precious time they have with, you know, with us, the patients. Oh, it's true. I've definitely felt rushed at the doctor's office. Like you're trying to explain everything that's going on and you can almost see the clock ticking in their eyes. Right. And Dr. Castro pointed out that on average, patients only get about 13 minutes. 13 minutes. 13 minutes with their doctor. Wow. To discuss potentially complex medical histories, understand diagnoses, ask questions. It's not a lot of time. No, not at all. So AI can streamline those administrative tasks, right? Giving doctors more time to actually focus on you. Okay, so no more scribbling notes while trying to listen to me talk about my symptoms. Exactly. Imagine this. You're at an appointment, the doctor's completely focused on you, and their AI assistant is quietly transcribing everything every detail. That'd be amazing. No more missed information, no more struggling to decipher handwriting. I love it. And okay, what about those discharge instructions? Yeah. You know, the ones they give you as you're walking out the door. I swear, I just nod and pretend I understand everything. Right, you get home, it's like, what did they say? Well, Dr. Castro had an interesting solution for that. Personalized explanations. Okay. Created by AI. So for kids, it could be a coloring book that explains their condition simply. Oh, I love that. For teens, maybe it's a comic strip. Yeah, that makes something that's call. engaging. So instead of just a stack of papers, you get something tailored to you. Yeah. Makes it easier to understand, you know, remember your care plan. Exactly. That's brilliant. And that brings us to a concept um, Dr. Castro calls predictive analytics. Okay. It's a bit further on the horizon, but it has the potential to, I mean, really revolutionize healthcare as we know it. Predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. So it sounds a bit like fortune telling, but with algorithms instead of like a crystal ball. In a way, yeah, it is about anticipating the future, right? So imagine an AI system that analyzes your medical data, family history, even your lifestyle choices. Oh, wow. And then it uses all that to identify potential health risks before they even become a problem. So it's like a super powered early warning system for your body. Exactly. Let's say you're predisposed to a certain heart condition. Predictive analytics could flag that really early on. Oh, wow. Allowing your doctor to intervene with preventative measures, lifestyle changes, or maybe medication. So we talked about AI helping doctors stay up to date and even predict, you know, those potential health risks. But what about the actual visit, the doctor's visit? Dr. Castro had some wild ideas about, like, how AI could transform the exam room itself. 
Yeah, he actually like envisions a future where you've got robots assisting doctors during examination. Robots. Providing, yeah, like real-time information, assistance, you know. It sounds kind of sci-fi, but honestly, it's closer than we think. Robots in the exam room. Okay, that's that's pretty futuristic. What would that even look like? Would they be like taking our blood pressure or something? Exactly. Like Dr. Castro, he really believes robots could be so helpful, taking vital signs, giving medication, even assisting with minor procedures. Oh. It's like an extra pair of hands, you know, freeing up the doctor to focus on the more complex stuff. Okay, yeah. I can see how that would be super helpful, especially like in a busy emergency room or something. But I don't know, wouldn't it be kind of weird having a robot like involved in such a personal experience? Oh, for sure. It's a valid concern. And Dr. Castro totally gets that. You know, he emphasizes like the human connection that's yeah. still key in healthcare. Right. Robots are tools. They enhance. They don't replace. Right. Right. Speaking of tools, he also talked about AI powered glasses. AI glasses. What? Like they give doctors X-ray vision. Not quite X-ray vision, but close. Imagine this. The glasses, they give doctors real-time info during an exam. Okay. Let's say a patient has a weird rash. The glasses can analyze it on the spot. Wow. Compare it to, like, thousands of images, and boom, potential diagnosis or, you know, suggestions for more tests. Wow, that's wild. Like having a medical encyclopedia, but it's, like, right there. Yeah. In your glasses. Exactly. Yeah. And get this, Dr. Castro also talked about breaking down language barriers. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a doctor, they're examining a patient who only speaks, say, Spanish. Right. The glasses, they could translate in real time. That'd be incredible. Direct communication, no more misinterpretation. That's amazing. Yeah. Language barriers are such a huge problem in healthcare, especially for patients who, you know, they don't speak the language. This could really make things, I don't know, more fair for everyone. Absolutely. And it goes beyond just language. These glasses, they could analyze medical images instantly. Imagine looking at an x-ray and the glasses, they just highlight potential problems or compare it to older scans, you know, track how things are progressing. That's really something. So these AI glasses, they could really like boost a doctor's ability to diagnose and treat. But what about like us, the patients? How does Dr. Castro see, you know, AI empowering patients in all of this? Well, he really believes AI can make patients way more involved in their own health care. OK. Imagine like having access to your medical records, you know, AI symptom checkers, personalized treatment plans. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The more info we have, the better decisions we can make about our own health. But with all this AI and data, what about privacy? Like, how do we know all this medical info is safe? That's the big question, right? And Dr. Castro knows it. He's big on data security, patient privacy. Okay. He truly believes developers, providers, they have a responsibility to handle data responsibly, ethically. So transparency and trust, that's what we need. As AI becomes more common in healthcare, we need to know how our data is being used and feel good about it. Exactly. And it goes beyond just protection. AI needs to benefit everyone, regardless of, you know, background, income, all of that. That's important. We've seen how AI can, like, reinforce existing biases, and yeah. we can't let that happen in healthcare. Right. AI should be used to create a fairer healthcare system for everyone. Absolutely. Which brings us to, I think, a really important point. The ethics of it all. Right. As AI gets more advanced, we're going to face some tough questions about its role, especially in those life or death situations. Exactly. It's heavy stuff. Yeah. So who gets to decide when and how we use AI in healthcare? Yeah. And what if it makes a mistake? Big questions. And Dr. Castro thinks we need to be having open, honest conversations about all this. Doctors, patients, ethicists, policymakers, everyone working together to make sure AI is used responsibly for everyone's benefit. It feels like we're, you know, right on the edge of a whole new world in healthcare, but we've also got some big, big questions to answer. Yeah, no doubt. And Dr. Castro, he really laid out the biggest one, I think. What kind of healthcare do we want for ourselves, our families in this future where AI is like just there? Yeah. Like a stethoscope. Right, huh? like a given. And it takes me back to that little boy, the one who was misdiagnosed. Like, what if AI had been there all along? Could he have gotten the right treatment sooner? Could his family have been spared all that pain? It's possible, right. And that's what's so hopeful, but also challenging about AI. It can maybe ease suffering, make healthcare more effective, even kinder, you know? Yeah, I see that. But like we've been saying, it's not just about the tech. It's about using it wisely, yeah. ethically, 
making sure it helps everyone. Exactly. And that takes all of us being, you know, informed, speaking up, asking those questions. Dr. Castro doesn't see AI as this thing being forced on healthcare. Yeah. It's got to be a collaboration, doctors, patients, everyone to really make it work. So for our listeners, the ones who are, you know, excited about this AI future, what should they be doing? Stay curious. That's the big thing. Talk to your doctor. See how they're using AI. Do some research. Learn about the good and the bad. Because, like Dr. Castro said, the choices we make now, they matter for a long, long time. It's an amazing time to be thinking about healthcare, even if there are still so many unknowns. But one thing's for sure, AI is not going anywhere. It's going to change our lives in ways we can barely even imagine. It's a lot to take in. And in this deep dive, I feel like we've only scratched the surface. AI diagnoses, robots in the exam room, all the ethical stuff. And this is just the start. Makes you wonder what's next. Right. That's the thing about a deep dive. Always more questions than answers. So to everyone listening, here's something to think about. As AI becomes more and more a part of healthcare, what part will you play? Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep asking those big questions.